Thank you very much, Mr. Shore. That certainly does set the stage nicely for our first panel discussion. And now to add an additional dimension to the subject, please join me in welcoming Captain Roger Hall, Chairman of United's MEC, for some opening remarks concerning the position of the Pilots Association in its talks with United Management. Captain Hall. crowd here today. I would uh, like to thank all of you for attending. Uh, I think we have an important message to bring to you today. At the outset, there is one item that I would like to address. I'm sure that by now most of you are aware that Mr. Ferris has offered to appear at our teleconference today and debate the issues in our negotiations. I have declined Mr. Ferris's offer for a number of reasons. As you will see... <laughs> As you will see as our program unfolds this afternoon, a large amount of preparation and planning was required to bring this program to you. We were just not in a position to undo all of that work. Additionally, I'm not aware of any negotiations that have been settled through the process of debate. We have invited the company to join us back at the bargaining table in an honest effort to resolve our differences. Mr. Shore, let me congratulate you. You have certainly cut to the heart of our issues. Your 15 facts represent the clearest two-minute presentation I've heard to date concerning our current impasse with United's management. But I'll go you one better. I'll wrap up the situation in just one sentence. We got where we are today because we couldn't get anywhere with the company over the past 15 months. Since our exchange of opening letters with management at the end of January last year, we have presented numerous proposals, each one modifying the one that preceded it in a goodwill effort on our part to address the problems the company had brought to the bargaining table and reach an amicable resolution of negotiations for all concerned. During this same time frame, the company has also presented several proposals, the difference being that the company has failed to respond to any of the issues that ALPA has brought to the bargaining table. It seems that management's idea of give and take is, you give, we'll take. It was the company, not ALPA, that requested the release from mediation. It was the company, not ALPA, which rejected binding arbitration suggested by the National Mediation Board. It is the company, not ALPA, which has refused to compromise on the issues. It is the company that continues to hold the scope clause hostage to the acceptance by us of all of their other demands. It is the company that remains resolute in its determination to force the two-tier pay scale on us. As we see it, this issue is more philosophical than it is economic, because we are not that far apart on the dollars and cents in an amended contract. As we see it, a two-tier pay system would have an unparalleled divisive effect on the orderly and harmonious flight operations, a situation that starts off bad and goes downhill from there in years to come. And somehow, you have to conclude that management can grasp that simple fact just as well as we can and wants it that way. The company's operating profit of $564 million last year belies its argument that it must have a two-tier pay scale in order to remain competitive. It all comes down to our philosophy of equal pay for equal work, set to the highest standard of performance in the industry versus management's recently acquired goal of unequal pay for equal work set to the lowest common denominator. I pose the question, 
If United Management is so intent on combating the low-cost carriers, why not force their carriers to raise their standards up to ours by offering their flight personnel an attractive alternative, which those carriers would have to meet at the risk of losing their most qualified people, rather than the course United seems set upon, the reduction of our standards in order to meet a threat that the company's most recent operating profit doesn't seem to indicate is theirs. As you well know, this is a pivotal issue which affects the emotional and financial livelihood of all of us. We know, after 15 months of negotiations, how deadly earnest the company is on this issue. It is our job in the next few weeks, by our action and our unity, to convince management that we are equally determined. Because the effects of a two-tier pay structure would not be felt by the incumbent pilots for some time, some might find it expedient to acquiesce to the company's demands. However, the destructive effects of such an agreement will, in my opinion, be felt much sooner than most would anticipate, and they would lead to the destruction of the incumbent's pilot's pay, pension, and working conditions. It would also lead to the destruction of your union and ultimately the profession. We must not become a party to signing the instrument of our own destruction. Thank you. It's obvious they hate you, uh, Captain Hall. <laughs> Nicely done.